Hello everyone and welcome back to Frame and Flow. In today's tutorial, we'll show you how to create stunning renders for your 3D models using VizCom, a powerful AI-driven tool. Whether you're an experienced 3D artist or a beginner exploring new possibilities, this step-by-step -step guide will help you transform your models into professional-grade visuals. So let's jump in and bring your creations to life. To create our renders, we first need a 3D model. For this tutorial, I'm going to use a chair from the Spline Library. Once selected, we'll export our 3D model using the Export panel. Choose the GLTF format and click Export. After exporting, go to VizCom. Once signed in, you'll see your dashboard. Here, click Create New File and name your project. Next, you'll have two options, Studio or Workbench. We're using Studio since most of our tasks will happen here. In Studio, start by choosing your canvas size. I'll go with Landscape and click Create. Before importing the 3D model, let's go over the VizCom UI. On the left panel, you'll find the Layers section, where your imported 3D models, images, or even blank layers are located. It's structured similarly to Photoshop, allowing you to change opacity, blending modes, rename layers, duplicate them, and more. At the top, you have your toolbar. The first tool is Move, which allows you to reposition objects. Then there's the Brush tool, where you can adjust brush size, opacity, and other settings. You can use the brush to sketch directly on the canvas and convert your sketches into renders. For more on this feature, check out VizCom's YouTube channel, where they have several useful tutorials to help you better understand how it works. Next is the Eraser tool, followed by the Color Selection tool, rectangle shape tool, and selection tool. There's also the symmetry tool, ideal for creating symmetrical designs. Lastly, we have the generate 3D button, which we'll discuss later. We also have the workbench section, but it's not essential for this tutorial. You can check the documentation if you're curious. On the right-hand side is the create panel. Here you'll find the prompts section where you can write prompts or use the Describe button to generate prompts based on your uploaded image or 3D model. Below that are the palettes, which allow you to choose different render modes, such as General, Surface, or Volume Render. For automotive renders, you can select either Interior or Exterior. You can also upload reference images to guide the AI in generating renders. Adjust the Strength slider to determine how closely the render matches your reference. Then there's Influence, which determines how much flexibility the AI will have in image generation. Setting the Influence to 100 means the AI will generate an image as close as possible to your 3D model, while setting it to 0 gives it full freedom to consider only the prompt and create an image based on that. Now that we've covered the UI, let's import our 3D model. First, clear any existing layers. Then in the toolbar, click the plus button and choose Upload 3D Model. Once uploaded, you'll see the chair. Initially, it won't have any shading. Click the Texture button to enhance its appearance. Next, adjust the focal length to 100, which is better for product photo shoots. Finally, reposition the camera to frame the chair effectively. With the setup complete, let's generate a render. Go to the Prompt tab, click Describe, and let it analyze the model. As you can see, it described the chair in detail. Now, without changing anything in the prompt, click Generate to create the render and see the results. After a few seconds, you'll see the rendered chair. As you can see, it has a very realistic look and didn't change any part of our 3D object. At the bottom of the page, you have a few options. If you have a subscription, you can generate four images simultaneously. You can also download, regenerate, or add the image to your layers by clicking the corresponding buttons. If you want to customize the render further, for instance, by specifying a wooden chair with a blue cushion, just type that into the prompt and click Generate. As you can see, the AI adjusts the design accordingly. To create more dynamic renders, you can upload reference images. As you can see, you have two options here, Style, and Material. Each provides slightly different results, but for this tutorial, I'll use the Material section. Let's upload a living room image, then adjust the Strength slider to control how closely the render matches the reference. 
Now click Generate and see what happens. As you can see, we now have our chair in the environment of the reference image. You can also select parts of the model and change their material to better suit your needs. For example, let's change the color of the seat cushion. To do this, use the lasso tool to select the cushion. Now that the cushion is selected, let's upload a new reference image to change its texture. Click Generate to apply the changes. As you can see, the texture has been applied to the cushion. With these options in Viscom, you can change the materials of each part of your 3D model and then place them in any environment using reference images. Now let's try using a sneaker to create a few renders. First, go to Spline and delete the chair. Then select a sneaker from the Spline library. As before, export it as a GLTF file. Next, return to Viscom, go back to the dashboard, and create a new file. Here, import the sneaker, apply textures, adjust the focal length, and position it on the canvas. For this one, I'm going to use a simple prompt, for example, black and yellow sneaker and click Generate. As you can see, our render is ready. Like what we did with the chair, you can use reference images to influence the sneaker's design. Let's upload an image and click Generate. As you can see, our sneaker texture is now similar to our reference image. Next, let's explore creating 3D models using our generated image. As you can see, there are two options here, but since we don't have a subscription, we can't use the detailed generation. However, the standard option will do the trick as well. Once our 3D model is generated, hide the other layers to view the model clearly. As you can see, our 3D model has a few issues. There are several ways to fix that. Let's delete it first and go back to our generated image. Use the Selection tool to select the sneaker and remove it from its background. Now, Let's create a 3D model with this cleaner version. While our 3D model is being generated, let's save this image because we're going to use it later as a reference. Go to File and Export it. Now let's see how our 3D model turned out. As you can see, we don't have the issues we had before. Now let's create three different angles of our sneaker. As you can see, the quality of the 3D model is not very ideal. To fix that, we can generate another image. Let's first upload the image of the sneaker, change the prompt to be simpler, and increase the strength. Now click Generate. As you can see, our image is ready, and now we have our sneaker with higher quality. You can export your image from the file menu. You also have the option to export a time-lapse video of your layers. If you have a pro plan, you can also export the 3D model and use it in Spline. And that's basically the overall overview of Viscom. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to like, comment, and make sure to hit the bell icon to be notified about our future tutorials. Thanks for watching, and take care.